like when you got a girl and a guy have a, a nice car, but a dude pull up behind them in a Ferrari and she get out and hop in the Ferrari right there. You got guys in the business just like that. I've you got seen. guys that do that. I've seen you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm serious. You got guys that do the same shit. They like a bitch. They hop out the car and hop in whoever's hot car. You like a bitch. Now, you, <laughs> a real bitch. Do you think that some of the uh, stuff, though, is maybe because you're not easily put in a box or you don't conform, you just do it your way, and if they like it, they do. If they don't, they don't? Uh, I think sometimes it's jealousy. You know, I think a lot of people in our career point, I think a lot of people was jealous of me and sad because we looked at young and we still look young. We don't, you know, sit home and grow a beard and all that shit and look crazy. And we don't let ourselves go. I think as time go on, you know, the world has a destiny for you to look like a certain person. Like, you know, you see Morris Day and, um, you know, but when you, go to maybe a lot of these events and stuff, they have a, a destiny look for you. They figure you're supposed to be like having a, you know, you're supposed to be weighing 300 pounds. You know, you're supposed to be coming in wobbling. Like, this is you. This is your time. Yo, I remember when you, yo, I remember that time. You know, I think you're supposed to get in that circle and come in looking fucked up. So when they don't see you looking fucked up, right, they see you like, you still slim, you still, you know, taking care of yourself, you know, you brushing your teeth, you didn't let your, um, you know, you didn't let your beard grow like fucking Grady, you know, they feel like, well, you don't fit the criteria. They feel, well, you're supposed to look a certain way because we could let you in, but you look, you're not looking as we expected you to be. Like, they like kind of shocked and mad at the same time. They figure like, we supposed to bump bellies or something like we supposed to meet up and bump bellies together and talk about the old times. And yo, when you used to touch the SB 12 like that and do that and you used to hit it with your hand and all that, you know, they feel like if you don't have that kind of conversation, you're really not really, you know, on the list to get in. Yeah. Well, <laughs> huh? but that's the beauty. And of I don't give a fuck either. I don't give a fuck. I, that's the way I see it. Like they have a destiny. They don't. They don't feel like you're supposed to come in well dressed with you. You know, well dressed and your appearance up, and you got jewelry on, like they do. Or wow. they feel you're supposed to come in fucked up. You know, they feel you're supposed to come in fucked up, looking dry skin, no lotion on your face. Like yo, you used to be a part of hip hop. Yo, I never did that stuff. So I never was a part of it. I never did that. But that's their determin that's their determination how how you should be. You know, that's their determination how you should be. Like, you know, anything, any awards, any kind of place that want to showcase that stuff. You know, I always think I wake up in the morning and I say, you know, I look at a lot of the classmates from I don't give a fuck from 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000 artists. Do you wake up and say sometimes, how do you let Smokey Robinson look younger than you? Like, how do you let Morris Day look younger than you? Like, how do you do that? Like, how do you, like, think of that? Is it, that got to be in a family or is your girlfriend or your wife? Be like, you know, it's time for you to look fucked up, baby. We've been together a long time. It's time for you to look fucked up because you need to give up looking good. Well, that's uh that makes me think of uh on Dr. Octagon the year 3000. You're always thinking you're not stuck in the past like a lot of people. Well, they get mad too cuz you want to evolve and stuff like that. That's bad too like they stuck like you know, it's like a you know, you you could have a handicap, you know. I say the handicapped people are more advanced, you know, people that are Mongolian, they still advance. I mean, you got people and now those time zones, they stuck in the time zone. So they can't see they self evolving. Like it's kind of like a, it's like a mental thing. You can't evolve. Like you can't go do something new and you hate it. You know, you know, you, you're fighting your kids cause they listening to something in the future. You know, you want to beat your son because he's not listening to the records you listen to. <laughs> like, 
I don't do that. I just be like, oh, that sounds cool. I'm going to do this new shit. I'm going to do something else. So I'm going to flip this. And, you know, I created this. How can I let somebody come out after me that created something? You know, that's what I'm saying. That's my thing is that I'm going to do something different anyway. Right. I'm ahead of my time. Always have been. Always have been. So I'm a, yeah. Well, I was also going to say you also, in addition to Ultra Magnetic, of course, you've done so many different collaborations and uh, with different artists. And one, I always was intrigued that the uh, the Tim Dog Ultra one came so early with the Big Time album. So, what made that happen at that time in your career? Well, you know, Tim was in LA one time on under the radar, even though he did the F Compton thing and all that, but he stayed in LA and then, you know, he was with Eddie Pugh. I think he was like the vice president of Warner Brothers and then he stayed in the Valley and stuff. So, you know, we just did an album together. At that time, I was on a run of doing all kinds of records. We did an album, Big Time Ultra. We did a video for a Big Time. Um, uh, Rex did the production, you know, it was pretty dope. It was just a different kind of record. Like, you know, and we did something kind of different, me and Tim, you know, and do, we had another project we did too in Atlanta called Project X. And, um, you know, I did a lot of projects too, like, you know, KHM and all that stuff. I did a whole lot of different albums and stuff, not only my own albums. I, I, you know, I had groups, you know, different things I was a part of, the Claiborne family, different things. I did so much stuff, you know, a body of work, you know, whereas other artists had to, you know, they were stuck with the record company time zones where they had to release two records every year. You know, you know, you got a lot of artists now that, you know, they are more like, they try and be like, you know, like a Michael Jackson. Everybody want to release like an album like Michael Jackson, like, you know, every six years and stuff like that. You know, everybody want to be Dr. Dre, but they don't have Dr. Dre money. Like Dr. Dre could make a record and put that shit out 30 years from now, but he could be old and do that. But I'm not into that shit, really. Like, but everybody's trying to do that. But they looking like Grady at the same time. That's the funny about it. You can't beat time yourself. I don't give a fuck how much money you got. You can't beat old time. Like these motherfuckers is getting like Grady and they want to put an album out like 50 years from now. It's like, it's cool, but when the album come out, you got a, you got a fucking cane in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm like, Dr. Dre could get away with that. You know, Michael Jackson could get away with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Prince could get away with that. But a lot of artists that ain't even on their level be trying to do that shit. That becomes the hilarious part about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it doesn't match. It's like, you know, this is rap, man. Get in the studio and throw a song down. Like, you know, a song down for fun, whatever. Like, you know, people are making it too vintage like oh you know just to get this person in the studio oh even if they near the studio you start getting the chills like oh they get ready to make something finally man fuck you fuck you and your whack ass like go sit the fuck down somewhere you know what i'm saying that's my point like get your whack ass in the studio or do something like stop being near it and creating the hype oh he in the lab Oh, they in the lab. Oh, they collaborate. No, they getting together. Oh, this one going to come out. Oh, this one going to be big. Oh, this. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, I see two in the studio. Oh, oh, I see another guy in the studio. I think it's more something about to cook up. That's all just fucking. All that stuff is just fucking with their audience and they ain't making a fucking record. Most of the times I see most of the artists that should be making records. You know what they be doing? They be posting other comedians and all that shit. And maybe shit, they ain't got nothing to do with nothing that they're doing. You know, they're posting up, you know, it's like a chick on Instagram posting like something about a wet vagina or something. You'd be like, yo, you know, why are you posting that? Like, you supposed to be doing music. You supposed to be in the fucking studio making a record, but you posting like the next man's joke. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, I mean, you dick riding like that, man. You riding that car real hard, man. You sitting on it with no condom, man. Fuck y'all, man. Fuck off, man. You know what I mean? Fuck off, man. <laughs> and I and they know, you know, they know they can't get down with me lyrically. They can't do shit. They can't 
get in the studio. They can't touch me with a fucking 90 foot pole on no microphone to this day. I'm just saying, I don't give a fuck, you know? And musically, my thing is, Sean, it's like, even the, it's good to, like, I rap, I did the Broadway Billy Project, you know, and I, I was on a track with Rock Moss that, that came out good. But I'm just saying, even the sample life, I rapped on some dope different samples and stuff like that, which was great. That's that's supposed to be coming out. And and another thing, too, I make my own music, the number one producer stuff. And I like the sample, and I like certain samples, but I'm not going to jock another motherfucker for samples like i'm not going to be like a sample guy forever like i like samples if they good when i rap on top of samples they really good but i'm not going to like you know we got to start creating music that the next guy want to sample but i'm not going to look up see the only guy i respect sometimes like i respect premier i do respect premier you know he got some nice records and it's a few people that's just premier but I'm saying all the, you know, in the RZA probably, but everybody else with the samples and, you know, I'm not jocking everybody for samples and I'm not going to, you know, Ron Carter. I don't give a fuck. I'm not, I don't give a fuck about Ron Carter and, you know, Don Sebesky and all of them, let them do what they did. And I'm going to do some shit that I'm doing. You know, I'm going to do what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I do, but, if it's a good sample, it's good. If it's different, I like different shit, but shit that sounds ordinary like somebody else and, you know, messing with other people's catalogs and blowing dust off the fucking, you know, catalog. I don't give a fuck about all that shit. You know, music is music and because we got a problem with anybody who makes something original and brand new, you know, they can't be down. What the fuck you think that those artists did back then when they when you sampling my you know Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis like what the fuck you think they made what the fuck you think Babyface made you know what I'm saying what you think Quincy Jones made brand new shit that you sampling I'm not gonna be doing all of that shit like I'm not you know you got motherfuckers traveling around the world to find records man go find your fucking self well remember uh, what about the Analog Brothers. Did you, how did that with you and Ice T? Huh? With the Analog Brothers, you guys were doing different stuff on there, especially. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that, but that was, you know, all kinds of different shit. Analog shit, synthesized shit, you know, brand new shit. I'm about brand new shit. I'm about samples, but I'm not all, the, I'm about distinctive samples that are different, but I'm not about common samples that, you know, you know, that, that sound the same, you know, and. You know, that's not the point I'm making. It's just the point is that we got to make something that people could use and reuse too. So, you know, we can't always feel, and then people feel like they're full, a full productive producer because they sampling. It's like, but you're sampling other people's shit to make you seem like you're a musician. You're not a real sampler. In the beginning, hip hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence thanks to gangster rap. Out of Crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. Hip hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.